Hi everyone, welcome back to Olives and Pearls. I'm so excited to be making this video and to be making content again. I know that it's been a really long time. A lot has taken place. I promise that this um, has always been important to me, but it was something that I really felt like the Lord told me to lay down. So it's been a really long time since I've recorded anything, but thank you for tuning in. This painting was really special to me. Um, it was the first prophetic piece that I've done in uh, a few months, and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, the Lion of Judah is the name of the painting, and I produced this piece at a women's conference that I was asked to be a part of that was just a real pleasure and honor um, through this ministry that I have uh, done a couple things with and actually been a recipient of here in Lexington. So um, I live in Lexington, Kentucky. So I was really, really happy when uh, I was asked to be one of the people doing ministry. And it was actually just the day prior to the event. We'd been planning this for months. I mean, literally, it had been months of planning and prayer and putting together teams and the night before, just a little bit before I went to bed, I felt like I really wanted to paint and it wasn't something that we'd planned. So I kind of called those uh, leading the event and I said, you know, can I paint? And they were, they were really excited and overjoyed because I painted for them before. So this was a piece that I did live and I know a lot of you are interested in doing live art. It's really, really fun. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot to it, uh, and then at the same time, it's pretty simple and compared compared to other pieces that you might do. But it's just a really great, wonderful process of partnership with the Lord. So it's something I do want to talk more about on my channel. And any questions that you have, feel free to ask. Um, I've been gone for such a long time because there have been an incredible amount of changes in my life. I think the last video I posted was about a year ago. And I was talking about my new studio and this incredible space that I had. And it really was amazing. I had one of the premier artist spaces in downtown Lexington, Kentucky. And um, I just loved it. There's this, I'll have to take you all on just a video tour through it, even though I'm not there anymore. It's called the Artist Attic. And there's this whole Victorian building that I've always loved. And I got to be up there and it was just and then the Lord told me to lay it all down. And um, at the time, it didn't make any sense. It was really hard to leave something that I'd wanted to do for so long. But there was a reason, and it's something that I'll explain probably in the next video. But um, So stay, stay tuned for that. But it was definitely worth it. And now here I am. The Lord brought, brought all of this back to me and just in a different way. So I'm, I'm doing this painting here, and um, I've got some others to show you. Um, so I started this painting, I did this painting in two stages that luckily this was an all day event. So I had the ability to do that. Not all prophetic art, not all worship painting is something that can be done in this way. But I started with the underpainting with the blue that you saw there and some of the kind of drippy colors for, um, an exciting backdrop that has a lot of sort of, um, depth and movement to it without a lot of time. So I've really enjoyed that sort of drippy look as a background for my worship pieces, the things that I have to do really quickly. I, I've just really enjoyed sort of that look, so that's a fun thing to do. Just sort of a quick way to add some depth to your piece and some visual interest so that it's not flat. I know a lot of people like kind of a flat white or a flat black or whatever color it is that they go with, and I appreciate that as well, but I, I, I like a lot of... Um, uh, color and variation in my pieces so that's why I do um, do that I, I like to use golden acrylic paint it's my favorite but sometimes I use Liquitex sometimes I use like Academy paint um, but the, the, the pigment in the golden paint is it's so expensive because it's just that good it's just so good and um, then I did a quick underpainting as well 
in some acrylic. I did like just a gray sort of outline to have a great foundation and basis for what I was going to be doing in the second stage of the painting. And because this was a, a day long women's conference event, it started in the morning and we had a worship time in the morning that was about half an hour. So I did the, the beginning part in about a half hour time period. And then the second portion of the piece I did in a, another half hour or so period of worship. And I actually did that in oil, which is a little bit unusual for me. Typically when I do a worship painting, I stick with acrylic because it's fast drying medium. And it's, uh, you know, I, that's basically it. It's, it's really quick. And also, you know, when you leave, you, like when you do an oil painting, I like to leave something on an easel for quite a while because it's wet for a long time. But when you do a worship painting, you don't have that luxury. You have to pack it in your car or if somebody happens to buy it at the event, well, then you have to say, oh, you're going to have wet paint. Please be careful. It's kind of a, you know, a sticky or, you know, literally <laughs> just a trickier sort of thing to do. But I just love oil painting and I haven't had a lot of time to paint. And so um, I just had to do that. So I did the uh, top layer, the, the color, I did the color to the lion. All of that was done with oil and I used um, several different brands. I can talk to you about the brands that I use if you're interested. What's funny is I actually had to leave during the lunch period because and, and run to the Michaels down the road because I had forgot my um, paint thinner. I use, uh, oh gosh, Gamsol. Um, and it, which is nice because it's odorless, which is wonderful when you're in a public space like this. I would never recommend using turpentine because certain people can have sim sensitivities to things like that and the fumes and the paint and making this as community friendly as possible is a really great thing to do. If, if you all are doing worship art, please, 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 for the love of all the artists around you, don't make a mess, don't leave mess around, don't ruin something, don't cause things to be smelly because it's kind of a new thing that a lot of churches are getting into and people are interested in. And if you start making a mess and dripping paint everywhere and, and being rude and and just kind of doing things that aren't friendly to those around you because it's, it's for the art, which I totally understand. We're creative and we get really into what we're doing. But um, when you do those things, it affects the other artists that come after you and the way that they're treated and the way that they're looked at. So um, just be mindful if you can. So um, at this women's conference, I was just so honored to be a part. And um, the reason that I did a lion, it was a last minute decision, literally. I think I decided when I got there what I was going to do or even while I was doing the underpainting. I'm, I can't remember. It was it was a quick decision. Um but I had had sort of something that had been in my spirit for a long time or oh, not actually for a long time at all for about a week prior. It was something that was really in me, but it was regarding um, the birth of my second daughter three years ago. And I know a lot of people talk about birthing things in the spirit, depending on how char charismatic your tradition is or the types of um, lingo people like to use or say. But um a lot of the people in my circles will make comments about birthing something in the spirit, which is a beautiful metaphor for the way that God does things and kind of a combination of the natural and the spirit world. And so I, I don't um, want to sound, particularly because I used to be a professional doula, I don't want to make it seem like I don't appreciate the birthing metaphor, but I feel like it's overused sometimes when you birth something, you carry it for nine months first. And a lot of times when you're birthing something in the spirit, it's something you've carried for years. You know, people in the natural, you plan for a baby and you pray for a baby. and Or sometimes you're surprised. And I mean, there's all sorts of stories. But either way, it takes a while for a baby to grow. And so um, it doesn't just happen. And, um, but I really felt that in my heart for some of the women that were sitting there at this conference and sort of some of the things that a lot of women in the area are going through. And when I had birth with, um, when I gave birth to my second child, I did a natural delivery. I did that for both girls, but, um, the first birth was really easy and smooth and, 
uh, not a lot going on there. It was, it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And uh, I'm so grateful for that experience. And my husband and I felt so close. And I did uh, hypno babies. Let me know in the comments if you're in, interested at all in what I'm talking about um, and hearing about that experience. But with the second birth with Sophia, um, I thought I was just going to die. It was miserable. I literally wanted to crawl out of my own body and I I envisioned myself doing that, just running away from my own body. And it was just the most excruciating thing. And um, my husband just looked so helpless and I was begging for an epidural. And I think that sometimes it's like that in our lives when there's something new that's being done. There's something new that's coming forward when we're birthing something it's like it's like that where we want to crawl away from it we want it we've wanted this baby we've carried this thing we've desired it so much but then when it's there the the crushing that takes place and the, the pain you just think I didn't expect it to be this way and it's it's terrifying I mean it's just absolutely terrifying and um I kind of felt that for some of these women and for my own heart with some of the things that are going on and all of the transitions in my life, just like, whoa, God, back up. This is really overwhelming and very intense. But what happened when I had Sophia was when when it was time to push, when that transition stage of labor was over, I literally began to growl. It was this almost animalistic thing that rose up in me. And it was a power almost outside of myself because everything I had was gone. It had been used up. Every ounce of energy, every bit of desire I had, just everything was just gone. But yet this powerful war, roar rose up in me and I, I pushed her out in one push. I mean, she was just there. And um, and I, I kind of felt this roar at a prayer meeting I was at recently, again, of just this thought of it's time, it's over. And um, and it felt like the lion of the tribe of Judah roaring over his bride and and that power to, to push forward and that power that comes outside of ourselves is, is Jesus within us. And um, so that, that was the inspiration for the painting. A lot of people have asked, where did you get the idea for the painting? And, and that's what it is. And um, although, you know, whatever, however God speaks to you with the painting, Um, is also relevant but uh, I'm sorry that's my husband getting juice for our (laughs) three-year-old to go to bed she's I need more juice the baby I was just talking about now she's three and in her bed and we're like go to sleep (laughs) but uh, (laughs) she's wonderful so she may just came down to refill her juice cup Um, so thank you thank you so much for uh, tuning into this video that's the story is the Lion of Judah, this particular painting, and um, if you have any questions, you're interested in knowing more, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share if you like it, um, and uh, I hope to see you next week. So thanks, bye.